No one thought it would ever happen, but then it did. Laura, who had been in a coma for three years, suddenly woke up and opened her eyes. Her parents, Don and Susie, filled with tears and joy, rushed towards their daughter, grabbed her hands and kissed her. You're awake, baby. We missed you so much. We love you so much, they wept. But much to their surprise, Laura stared at them with terror in her eyes, as if they were strangers. Baby, it's mommy. Don't you know us? Susie panicked. And that was when Laura said something that made her parents realize that something was very wrong. What they would learn soon would set their little world on fire. This story is one of grief, loss, despair and hope. It all started with two families living in the city of Michigan. These families weren't friends nor they were acquaintances. They didn't know each other until a tragic incident brought them together. This incident is something so sad and painful that it hurts to even talk about it right now. On one side, we have the Serex, a family consisting of Newell, his wife, Colleen, and their daughters Whitney, 22, and Carly, 15. On the other side, we have the Van Rin family, consisting of Don and Susie and their daughters Laura, 19, and Lisa. The daughters from both families, Laura and Whitney, attended Taylor University in Indiana, but they were in different departments, so they had never seen each other before until a school event. A field trip brought them together. The night before the event, which would have the girls traveling about two hours away from their school, they both called their parents on the phone just to say goodnight. If only one of these girls knew that was the last time she would ever speak to her family. If only she knew that was the last moment she would share with them. The next day, all the students, including Laura and Whitney, gathered in front of the school. 30 minutes later, the school van that would bring them to the field trip pulled up in front of the students and they all rushed in to take their seats. During the journey, everyone kept staring at Laura and Whitney, and there was just one question on everyone's lips. So, why were they staring at the girls? And why was everyone asking them the same question? Well, I will tell you all about it soon. The students had a fun time during the field trip. They were all excited. They sang, danced, and played games. Laura and Whitney even said a few words to each other, but it was on their way back that a tragedy struck leaving five families in pain and misery. Just when the students were about 30 minutes away from the college, a truck coming at a high speed suddenly crashed into the school van, sending the students and their belongings flying. Within a few seconds, parts of the vehicle and broken glass were all over the ground, and so were six bodies, two of which were Laura's and Whitney's. Sadly, out of the six, only one person was still alive but barely. One girl was struggling to stay alive, she was later identified as Laura by the coroner. A couple, Jennifer and Tom, who were driving past the accident scene, pulled over to help the students. Jennifer went over to Laura, who was severely bleeding from her head. Speaking about the moment, she said, I stood over her and I kept saying, Baby, hang on. I did for her what I would have done if that was my child laying there. Paramedics quickly responded to the situation and Laura was airlifted to the hospital. Laura's parents were informed of their daughter's condition and they immediately rushed down to the hospital where they received some devastating news. Due to a head injury that she sustained during the accident, Laura was in a state of coma and no one, including the doctors, knew if she would ever wake up. As Laura lay unconscious in her hospital bed, her family took turns comforting her. They wanted someone to be around her when she woke up. It was during these hospital visits that Lisa noticed something strange about her sister, but she never spoke about it to anyone. If only she knew she would come to deeply regret this decision. Meanwhile, in another small neighborhood in Michigan, the Syrik family was grieving. They had lost their daughter Whitney to the accident and their lives would never be the same. The family organized a closed casket funeral for her. She wanted to live so badly. She wanted so much from life. Whitney didn't deserve to die, Whitney's sister Carly said. The college students organized a candle night for Whitney. It was indeed a tragic incident that none of them would ever forget. One that marked a turning point in the lives of everyone involved. With each passing day, Laura's family members took turns in spending time with her at the hospital. They would sit by her side, cry their eyes out and tell her they believed in her that she needed to come out of the coma because they missed her so much. Days soon turned into months and months into years. 
Yet no one knew how long they had to wait until Laura eventually came out of the coma. It was really a terrifying situation. As for the Sarek family, their lives never remained the same after Whitney's death. But one day, three years after the devastating incident, something extremely shocking happened. That day, Laura's sister was by her side when Laura suddenly opened her eyes and said, Mom. Lisa quickly called the doctor's attention and they gave her proper treatment. Within an hour, all the family members quickly gathered around Laura, but something strange happened. Laura stared at them as if she had never seen them before. Each time they tried to hold her, she recoiled and told them to move away from her. There were lots of questions running through her parents' mind. Had she lost her memory during the accident? Did she need some time to recollect their faces? Well, none of these came close to the shocking truth this family was about to discover and it all started when Laura's mother called her name. Just then, Laura said, I'm not Laura, my name is Whitney, I don't know you. At that moment, the family took a closer look at Laura and that was when they noticed something really odd. When I looked into her eyes, I realized they were a bit smaller than my daughter's eyes. It all just made sense. She wasn't Laura. Lisa also remembered that she had seen a piercing on the young woman's navel and her biological sister didn't have a piercing. It was a very difficult moment. None of us could utter a word, Lisa recounted. So if Whitney, whom they thought was Laura, wasn't their daughter, it meant one thing. Their real daughter, Laura, had died in the accident and the girl's identities have been mixed up. Can you imagine waiting three years for your loved one to come out of a coma and when they finally do, realizing they're not who you think they were and they're in fact a stranger? So heartbreaking. When the hospital learned about the mix-up, they contacted the coroner involved in the case and he reached out to Whitney's family. The coroner asked them to bring Whitney's dental records to the hospital so they could verify the identity of the survivor. When the family arrived at the hospital, the test result confirmed the truth. Whitney, their daughter whom they thought was dead, was actually alive while the Van Rins daughter Laura was the one who had passed away. So what went wrong? How were these ladies' identities mistaken? You see, immediately after the accident, the rescuers were confused because Whitney and Laura bore a striking resemblance to each other. Remember, at the beginning of this story, I said that the students couldn't stop looking at Laura and Whitney and they were asking them the same questions? Well, it was because the girls looked alike and everyone thought they were twins. So the rescuers were confused as well. Hence, they pinned the ID card of the dead girl to the surviving one. In this way, Laura became Whitney and Whitney, Laura. The Van Rin family also didn't realize it wasn't their daughter in that hospital bed for so long because the doctors had told them not to expect their daughter to look like herself after such a brutal and bone-breaking accident. When the truth surfaced, both families were weeping, one with relief, the other in devastation. Tears were also shed by Indiana Kerner Ron Mowry. He cried as he apologized publicly and took responsibility for his office's failure to use DNA samples, fingerprints, or dental records to confirm the identities of all the victims of the crash. The families eventually accepted the new development. Hopefully, time would heal the wounds of these families. What do you think about this story? Share your thoughts in the comment section. See you next time.